Lunch with Fox and Mew, written by General Whitefur, and read by Gumbasa. Mew sighed as she stepped out of the containment wing of Corneria Medical. It had been five days since all the aperoids in Lilat and presumably the galaxy went pluey, but Mia and her fellow geneticists and surgeons still found themselves with their hands full dealing with people who had been partially assimilated by the bugs. It seemed that the nanoprobes within victims like General Pepper and Peppy Hare hadn't been completely linked to the aperoid hive consciousness, and thus they hadn't gone pluey with the rest of their insectoid brethren. This meant that, fortunately, when the aperoids all died, those that were in the process of assimilating hadn't shared their fate but it still left surgeons working around the clock to cut out the technology and geneticists like Mew working equally long hours, figuring out how to repair the deeper, more microscopic damage. Mew! The lynx smiled and turned around at the sound of the familiar voice in the atrium outside the containment wing. Hey, Fox! I assume you're here to see Peppy? She asked, glancing at her watch. Yeah, can I see him? The Todd looked at her hopefully. No, he needs to rest for the time being, she told him, though she hated to make his ears droop like that. But- Miu interrupted him before he could finish his sentence. No buts, he's fine, but he needs to rest. You and the whole team just saw him earlier today. I was kind of hoping to see him alone, Fox admitted, scratching the back of his neck. Miu quirked an eyebrow. Alone? Oh, that made sense when she thought about it. You need someone to talk to, Fox? Um, kind of, yeah, he said, looking abashed. Miu glanced at her watch one more time, confirming the time. I have a lunch break, the first one I've had in five days. Come on, let's go eat and you can talk to me. Fox smiled at her and wagged his tail. Sounds good. Where are we going? Not the cafeteria, I promise you, Miu assured him. I hate hospital food as much as anyone. The two of them stepped into the elevator at the end of the hall. Ground floor, Miu told it. So, if not the cafeteria, where are we going? Fox asked again. You remember that little cafe we used to hang out at after school? Miu inquired. Little Rock? Fox's eyes brightened. It's still standing? Yep, Miu answered happy to be the bearer of good news. After the amount of damage the aperoid rampage had inflicted, it always felt nice to be able to say that there were places that were still standing. The two of them turned around in the lift to watch the skyline through the window. It seemed a lot flatter than it should have been. I hear they're already planning on how to rebuild this place, Fox commented. Some new style buildings called Mega Towers. Miu nodded. She'd heard of them. They'd never been built anywhere in Lilat, but there had been rumors about various companies developing them. The Mega Towers would combine housing, commercial, and entertainment facilities all within one massive building. The idea was to build vertical to save space. If Miu remembered correctly, the Mega Towers would be linked by sky rails, essentially long, winding roads and maglev tracks between all the various buildings. There were already a couple of sky rails in some of the more modern sections of the city most of which were nothing more than ruins now. Still, the idea intrigued her. Miu had grown up with television shows about the future, and she'd always loved science fiction, so if one good thing could come out of all of this destruction, she would be happy if it was being able to live in a truly futuristic city. Yeah, you should look up the designs for those. They're pretty awesome. Like I've always said, the future is vertical. The elevator came to a halt, and Miu stepped out with Fox. The ground floor of Corneria Medical buzzed with activity. Patients were being wheeled and escorted to and fro, and doctors rushed off staring at their persicoms or clipboards while somehow managing not to run into one another. Miu shoved her hands into her lab coat and nodded her head towards the doors. Follow me and keep a low profile. This is the first break I've had in five days. I'm not getting roped into anyone else's problems. Fox nodded and followed Miu. The Lynx took her Persicom out and made a show of scrolling through her messages on the little holographic projector, glancing behind her to make certain Fox wouldn't see one particular one as she scrolled by it. She stopped when she found a report that looked very important and official, 
and what she'd read before. Using the report as a disguise, she led Fox through the maze of doctors, orderlies, and patients until they managed to get out into the open air. Miu refused to breathe a sigh of relief until she'd reached the parking lot and unlocked and opened her hover car. Fox got into the passenger seat, and Miu turned on the electric engine. There was a brief humming as the car's repulsors came online, and then Miu guided the vehicle out of the parking lot and onto the streets of Corneria City. So, what have you been doing for the last five days? Fox asked her, looking out the front windshield at the hexagonal solar panels that made up the roadway. Unspooling Aperoid DNA from Liladian DNA, Miu responded. Which is about as fun and complicated as it sounds. Making any progress? Loads. The nanoprobes might not have been fully connected to the Aperoid hive mind, but it seems they were getting their instructions on what to infect from it. Now that they've lost contact, they've gone inert. We think it's a self-preservation mechanism for while they wait for the hive mind to re-establish contact. Either way, now it's just a matter of finding them, ripping them out, and then repairing the damage. Mew explained. She glanced at Fox next to her and smirked at the look of confusion on his face. <laughs> Don't worry. It took me almost two whole days to fully comprehend it. That's a long time for you, Fox stated. I know. For a while, I thought I was losing my touch, Mew admitted. You never, Fox answered. Mew glowed at the compliment. She'd always been at the top of her classes back in high school and college. In fact, she'd graduated at the top of her class at the Cornarian Academy with a double PhD in genetics and anatomy. She could name every bone in the bodies of every single sentient Lilatian species, every muscle group as well. Most doctors only specialized in one or two specific species. Even her most jaded professors had grudgingly admitted she was a borderline genius. But the best part of it, in her opinion, was the fact that she was also a pilot who could give Bill Gray and Cat Monroe a run for their money in an R-Wing or other fighter of choice. Thanks, Fox. That means a lot. Miu parked her hover car on the street just outside the Little Rock Cafe. She checked for traffic before opening her door and stepping out. The two of them entered the cafe and smiled when the maitre d' recognized them. The peppy blonde vixen grinned at them and said, Dr. Lynx and, oh my god, Fox McCloud! Fox grimaced and held a hand up. Please don't spread it around that I'm here. The vixen clammed up immediately. Lowering her voice, she said, Of course, but, uh, would you mind? She sheepishly handed him a piece of paper she'd torn from a pad on the podium. Miu watched as Fox made sure to smile pleasantly and took the paper. Miu handed him a pen, and he looked at the name tag the vixen wore. He quickly scrawled out, from Fox McCloud to Lacey, before handing the piece of paper back to the grinning vixen. Miu could hear her tail wagging. Now, he said, could we get a table? Outside, please? Lacey nodded emphatically and picked up a pair of menus. Please, follow me! Miu elbowed Fox and asked teasingly, Write your number for her? Fox's eyes widened before he shook his head. No. Lacey led them to a table outside. An umbrella provided shade, and Miu spotted Fox's relieved expression at the fact that no one was seated near them. Miu happily breathed in the fresh air, and her eyes thanked her for exposing them to natural light for the first time in days. Lacey set down their menus and said, Your server will be with you in just a few minutes. And thank you for the autograph, Mr. McCloud. Not a problem, Lacey, Fox answered. The vixen walked off, her step bouncy and her tail still wagging. Miu couldn't help but let her gaze follow her. Mm, she has a nice butt, the lynx thought to herself as she opened the menu. You know, Fox, I'm surprised you don't have groupies yet. Fox quirked an eyebrow at her and said, I don't. Falco told me they had a website and everything. Miu laughed. I think Falco is lying out of his ass, as usual. Unless you've been taking advantage of your status as savior of the universe and not telling me about it. Fox blushed a bit and shook his head. Never in a million years. Then, looking like the mischievous Fox he was, he added, I definitely tell you about it. I might want in on that, Miu said. Ooh, these sandwiches look good. I think I'll get the turkey. Fox stated. And are you serious? About wanting in on groupies? Miu rolled her eyes. 
No, I'm not that desperate. Falco might be, though. And I think I'll get the chicken. I don't want to risk the turkey making me drowsy while I'm unspooling aperoid crap from Peppy's DNA. That would be good, Fox said, checking the drinks listed. Miyu looked up a moment later to see their server approach. She did a double take when she saw it was the same vixen that had greeted them when they arrived. Hi, the vixen said when she reached the table. I'm Tracy and I'll be your server today. Can I get you started with something to drink? Yeah, Fox said, stopping when he looked up from his menu. Miyu saw the wheels turning in the male vulpine's head. Are you by any chance? Oh, Lacey and I are twins, Tracy explained with a smile, her tail wagging. I heard you got your autograph, Mr. McLeod. Fox's ears flicked, and he blushed. I don't suppose you'd like one, too. Tracy's smile didn't falter, though Miu saw her ears flush just a bit. If it isn't too much trouble. Fox just smiled and held out his hand for the piece of paper and pen Tracy held out to him. Miu watched him sign it and add a little message at the end before handing it back to the vixen. Thank you so much, Mr. McLeod. And, uh, well, I'm not sure how to thank you for saving the world, but thank you. This time, Fox really did blush. In fact, Miu couldn't recall anything making him blush that hard besides Crystal flirting with him. Uh, no problem. I'm not really sure what to say other than you're welcome. There was a moment of silence that Miu just managed to prevent from becoming awkward by breaking in and ordering a coffee. Fox ordered a glass of iced tea, and Tracy dutifully noted down the orders before bustling off, her tail wagging furiously. Once she was out of earshot, Miu said, Tell me you put your phone number and call me on that autograph. Fox shook his head. No, I didn't. Miu just slumped and shook her head. Fox, twins, do you understand me? Twins, vixen twins with blonde hair and cute butts and big... Okay, okay. Fox held up a hand to quiet her. I'm not Falco, remember? And neither of you come to think of it. The Lynx just laughed. I'm sorry, I'm just making fun. Want me to tell them that you'd like to go on a date? Fox asked her. Miu quirked an eyebrow. Which one? Does it matter? Miu thought for a moment and then shrugged. Eh, not really. I see them all the time. Though, now that I think about it, that's the first time I've seen Tracy. I always thought it was just Lacey. Maybe they switch name tags without telling anyone. It wouldn't surprise me, Fox shrugged. A lot of identical twins enjoy operating as a team like that. True. How are things, Fox? Uh, better, I guess, Fox replied. Worried about Peppy and General Pepper, though I know I shouldn't be. Miu just smiled sympathetically and did her best not to feel guilty about taking a break, as well deserved as it was. We're all working as hard as we can, Fox, but it's going to take time. I know. Fox's ears tipped back a bit. I didn't mean that as an insult or anything. Don't worry, Miu assured him. You got anything good going on? I bet you and Crystal had a fun time after all the victory parties. That made his ears go ruddy, just like she wanted it to. Miu had quickly discovered, after meeting the Blue Vixen, that she was just about the only subject that could take Fox's mind completely off of whatever troubles he might be having. That, and she'd been meaning to talk to him about Crystal. What do you mean? Gonna be coy, huh? Okay, I know what to do, Miu thought to herself. I mean, a hotel room, a bottle of champagne, and absolutely no sleeping allowed. What? Fox's eyes widened. We haven't... we aren't... not yet. Not yet? What's the holdup, Fox? Miu leaned forward and gave him a hooded-eyed look. I'm positive she'd say yes. No, she... wait, really? The fox gazed at her curiously. Did she say something to you? Miu just shrugged. Come on, I mean, tabloid readers everywhere already think you're screwing. You've never been subtle with language, have you? Fox smiled ruefully. A eh, waste of time. Hi, Tracy! The vixen smiled at her and set down their drinks. One coffee and one iced tea. Are you ready to order or do you need a little more time? I'm ready, 
Miu said. Fox? Yeah. They placed their orders and waited until Tracy had gone inside to resume their conversation. Vulpine ears, as everyone knew, were basically massive parabolic dishes waiting to pick up any sound within range. Thus, it always paid to be cautious when discussing sensitive topics around them. So, the tabloids are already speculating on us, Fox asked, looking a bit disturbed. How bad is it? Oh, bad enough that I've had to keep Faye from calling you guys to confirm three times now, Mew told him, blowing on her coffee. Oh, God, Fox whispered. Thank you. Mew chuckled and sipped her drink. Try as I might, I can't keep her from reading them. At this point, I've given up on doing anything but damage control. Fox picked up his iced tea. How is she, by the way? Faye? Cute as a button. She's staying at my apartment at the moment. Hers got bombed out, Mew said, conscious of the fact that Fox had intentionally changed the subject. I have a feeling a lot of people are in that situation, he replied, pursing his lips. Yeah, Miu nodded. CDF's got their hands full with refugees. At least they have a lot of experience with it. Tracy returned them with their sandwiches, and the two dug in. Miu was ravenous. She'd barely had a chance to eat anything even approaching a proper meal in days, and the chicken tasted delicious. I saw a star wolf in the news yesterday, Miu said between bites of her sandwich. Yeah, they turned up at a Cornarian base on the outskirts of the system, Fox said. There was some mention of possible executive pardons in return for their help in the conflict, Miu mentioned. You think it'll happen? Fox shrugged. We owe them, sort of. We'll see what happens. Hmm. Miu regarded Fox for a moment. She'd never imagined him saying something even remotely positive about his biggest rivals. Then again, she'd always felt that Fox harbored a certain grudging respect for Wolf, the same way she knew the Lupine felt about Fox. She briefly wondered if perhaps their working together against the Aperoids signaled a new chapter for their rivalry, perhaps even something of a closing one. I also saw a picture of their newest pilot. Panther? Yeah. Fox said, finishing the first half of his sandwich. What about him? He's dreamy. Miu tried not to laugh when Fox nearly choked on his food. What? Nothing, he's just not your type. Fox shook his head. Maybe I like a bad boy, Miu retorted, leaning back in her chair and drinking the last of her coffee. He's about as bad as it gets. He spent half the Battle of Corneria hitting on Crystal, tried to get her to wing ride on his wolfen, Fox grumbled. Miu arched an eyebrow. Jealous, are we? Don't tell me she flirted back. Well, a little. Miu stopped mid-bite and set her sandwich back down. Okay, now is the perfect time, I think, the lynx thought to herself. Fox, I need you to do something for me. What? He looked at her curiously. When you get back to where you and the team are staying, I need you to find Crystal, grab her in your arms, and plant the biggest kiss in the world right on her mouth, Miu instructed, looking at him earnestly. Fox blushed and glanced down. You don't think... I think her flirting with Panther is a signal, Miu shrugged. I know for a fact she really likes you, but you've been dancing around her for a year. Nobody can be patient forever. Fox sighed and pushed the remnants of his food away. Yeah, maybe you're right, but do you really think I should do something that sudden? Like just grab her and kiss her? It, it seems... Romantic? Sexy? Hot? Because it's all three of those, Miu told him. Fine, a kiss it is, Fox nodded. Though if this ends up being a disaster, I will blame you. Fair enough, Miu smiled, patting him on the shoulder. Now let's split the check and you can walk me back to my lab. About an hour later, Miu took her eyes away from her microscope. They arched from staring into it for the last 45 minutes. She could feel a headache coming on. To make matters worse, the coffee from lunch seemed to already be wearing off. She'd built up more tolerance for caffeine in the past few days than she suspected most people built up in a year. Her ears perked at a tone from her Persicom. Grabbing the small silver device from where it lay on the lab table, 
She clicked it on and smiled when Crystal's head popped up in the holographic form. Hey, Chris. Hey, Miu. Did it work? The Lynx inquired. Oh, yes. He came back, slammed the door behind him, found me, and kissed me right on the lips. Crystal informed her, a dreamy look in her eyes. I owe you one. No problem, Miu answered. Just be careful not to rush him. Fox likes to take things slow. Too fast and his fur will catch fire. Oh, he was blushing like mad right after. He's just too cute. Crystal laughed. It was a sweet laugh, though, not a hint of sarcasm or malice in it. I'll let you get back to work, though. Thanks. Make sure and keep me updated on you and the orange fuzzball, though. Will do. The call ended, and Miu just sat there with a smile on her face, enjoying the success of a well-executed, successful plan. Her door opened a moment later, and one of the lab assistants walked in with a data pad. Another one followed behind him, holding a tray laden with DNA samples. Right, Miu said. What's next? The End